Welcome back to another how-to video from Electronic Control Services. My name is George Merchant. I'm the owner of ECS and you can check us out on www.improvemaintenance.com. No D in there, just improve maintenance. And today we're going to be talking about how to use a multimeter. So uh, a lot of common misconceptions with multimeters, even people that have been using them for quite a while, don't kind of understand exactly how it is that they work. So I'm just going to break it down and make it as simple as possible. We're going to start with this right here. I think everybody probably recognizes a tape measure. A good old cheap. Just borrowed this from uh, one of my cohorts. Right there. One of the things that why, what this has in common with the multimeter is that you are measuring something. I think you guys can get the reference there. And reference being the most important word today. So in my training that, uh, that we do, and we offer all kinds of training, here's one of our training booklets that we leave with um, each attendee. I'll come on site and bring my trainers, which you'll see in a moment. And we actually go over the stuff. We do a lot of hands-on training. We have a classroom upstairs where we do boot camps for um, controls, troubleshooting, where you get to do everything from A to Z. So enough about us. We'll just jump right into the training. So a tape measure. When you're using a tape measure, there's two ends of the tape measure that matters. It's where you're starting from and where you're ending at. You're not just measuring in the middle of nothing. You're going to start at a point. Say I wanted to measure the width of my shoulders or something like that. I'd start at a point and I'd end at a point, right? And I'd get my measurement. Or, you know, corner of the wall there to here, you know, and say, okay, I'm, I'm 14 inches away from that or, or uh, three feet or, or however we're, we're looking at it. But the, 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 the reason that this is so important to remember is that there's a starting and an end point. So your starting point we usually refer to as a reference in anything. Whether you're talking about pressure or you're talking about distance or you're talking about voltage on a meter, you are measuring the difference in something. Sometimes referred to as the delta. We won't try to get too um, convoluted into it, but the delta between two points or the difference between two points, okay? So I'm going to start off with, we're, we're going to stick with just the, the couple basic multimeter settings that we're going to use in everyday troubleshooting. So whether we're talking about it's something in the plant, something on your car, something in your house, the two basic settings that you're going to use is voltage, DC or AC, voltage, and resistance, okay? Or the ohm symbol looks like a little delta, and we'll go ahead and jump right into it. So what we need to remember when we're doing this, we'll just go ahead and switch it on over here. Got us set up on one of our trainers, as you can probably see very well. And what I have here is my good old Fluke 787, and really the three settings that we're gonna be looking at is my voltage, Okay, you see the V with the squiggly line, V with the straight and the dotted, or resistance, okay? We'll start off with resistance, and we'll just demonstrate that really quickly. So I've got two meter leads. It's important to remember, one is for your reference. You gotta use both of them, because we're measuring the distance between two things, okay? In this case, it's the resistance between two points. So if I touch these together, I get 0.2 ohms, or almost nothing at all. Pretty much no resistance at all. There's going to be some resistance in your leads, your connection points. If you squeeze them in there, or pull them out a little bit more, you might get a little bit of change. You got a little bit of dust or corrosion. You might rub it a little bit off. You might get a little bit of a, a difference. So when I'm most of the time in troubleshooting, what I'm doing is I'm looking for a break. I don't do this in a circuit. That's hot though. I'm not going to do this in a live circuit. I'm going to do this in something like, say I have myself just a, a wire, okay? I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to measure the resistance in this wire. I imagine it's going to be something very similar. Yep, I got 0.5 or 0.4. We're kind of flickering between 0.5 and 0.4 there. And all that is is just a wire. So if I have a break in my wire, okay, and we'll just simulate a break by not touching together, I'll get something like OL. Or maybe if it's just barely making, I might have something in the mega ohms. So if I want to check something like a push button, for example, right? 
And I want to check, check my contacts on the back of this push button. We're working in a nasty, dirty environment, okay? Right now it's open. I'm at normally open contacts. When I press in on it, there we go. Oh, look, I'm not making very good contact because my screws aren't screwed down real well and everything like that. But if I go in there and I, this is important to remember what you're doing is, is can you trust your, can you trust what you're seeing? Okay, there we go. I got 0 0.3, 0 0.2, right? So I pretty much have no resistance across that as would be expected on a good set of contacts, all right? So when we're using resistance, we're just checking continuity. That's, that's all we're doing is we're checking continuity. And if I was to say check a fuse or a breaker or anything like that, I'm doing the same thing. All I'm doing is checking continuity, which is very important, right? So that's all I'm doing when I'm looking for a break, okay? Am I making it across it? Am I doing, you know, making good contact? I may on like a contactor like this, I don't have any wires across it right there, so I could I could check for continuity from top to bottom, which right now I have none. And let's see here. Now that it's pulled in, there whoop, there we go. Make sure you're making decent contact. I've got and it's probably less than that, but I've got point it's flickering one point something to less than a no, okay? Again, these things are not screwed down all the way and stuff like that, which start to make. And I could go through and I could check all my contacts. Now, I don't have power on this part of it. These are just dry contacts with nothing on it, so that's perfectly safe to do. Now, if I want to check the connection between something with power on, I need to make sure I'm on voltage, okay? It's very, very important. Now. I know that this is 24 volt DC. You may not be able to see it under the wires there, but I've got it marked. My brown blocks are 24 positive, and my blue blocks right here to the right of them are zero volts. So I'm going to put it on DC voltage, and I'm just going to check that real quick, okay? And look at that, 24.06. So 24 volts, okay? And it doesn't matter if you get these backwards. It'll just show negative instead. See that? Not a big deal, right? So if I'm looking at something and I want to test, say, a, a, uh, a relay, for example, or um, I want to test my, my, my photo eye right here, right? My photo eye or my proc switch that's, that's over here that I'm setting up. Any of these things right there, okay? You can see that red light coming and going there. Any of, any of these things right there, I want to maybe check my signal, okay? I need to make sure that I have the proper reference first, okay? So I need to look at that device and say, okay, what, what's the reference? Well, this might be a PNP or an NPN, and that, again, matters. Now, me looking at my PLC inputs, and I'm, you know, checking that out there, I can see that it's flagging. I can see up here that my, my white with blue stripe is my zero volts. I know that's my zero volts. Therefore, I know by looking at that, that zero volts is my reference, okay? So that's on the, that's on the other side of my signal. So one of my leads is gonna go to zero volts and I can have it here, I can have anywhere, I could come up here, I could come up anywhere, if I can get my meter in here decently, I could go anywhere on here that has zero volts. It doesn't matter. It could be anywhere on here. If I just follow this around and I look around for my zero volts, then I can go ahead and I can use that spot. Well, this is a good easy to get to spot, so we're just going to use that right there, okay? Actually, I'm going to do it right there and a little bit out of the way. Then I know that my orange cable right here is my sensor, and I see that that's my 24 my zero, so I know it's neither one of those. Then I can go to where it's coming in, number three, don't even need a print, and I can check for 24, okay? And let me get out of the way here and go to the top. Oh, oh, I did have 24 when I was on the bottom. It's because I was blocking it. See that? 22.6. Now, it's normal to see a voltage drop, 
especially across anything that's uh, got a solid state device in it, some sort of transistor in there, you're going to have a voltage drop. See that? See it coming and going? I know that my signal is good coming back from this. And this is going to be the same way I test anything, whether I'm talking about an AC or DC. Only difference is, is I would have my meter on AC. So if I wanted to test if my incoming power was good, say my power supply here, I'm not sure. Is it any good? All right, let's go to AC. I know that I have 110 coming in here. It's, it's lighting up, so I know it's got it. But for demonstration purposes, let's see here, 122. There you go. So I know I've got my incoming voltage, right? Got my incoming AC voltage. And then let's say if there was a question about the power supply, then I might go and, and, and test this right here. I might go ahead and test my top and say, okay, I've got 24, which we know because we just tested it down there that it definitely has it. So this is the this is how you would use it in a circuit. And all I'm doing is in any any point in time, all I'm wanting to do is, am I getting my inputs back? Am I getting my signals back? How do I properly do that? Reference. What's my reference to this? Okay, I know that my reference is zero volts. So zero volts and I'm testing my signal, okay? That's all I'm doing is testing my signal. And then I might have somebody flag it for me or I might flag it myself or whatever, right? And I can see that I'm getting that change in there, right? So that's, that's really all you have to do to check for proper operation of this. Now, if this was... If, if zero wasn't the reference for it, then our, our reference would be 24 in this, in this signal. And this depends if it's NPN or PNP. So I know that this is PNP because it's using zero volts for its reference. But if it was NPN, my positive right there, that's, that's my plus 24. And then I would be checking, you know, like say here I'd be checking to see if I've got 24 volts coming into it to do that because and the reason I know this works because we set these up a specific way on purpose so I'm gonna drop that back out you can see I lost my 24 volts because in this small contactor here I know that oh, I gotta hold down the button on this I know that my reference in this case is actually 24. And I can actually kind of tell that because I'm on my A2, my coil, I've got brown wire, and all my brown wire is 24 volts, okay? Just another little trick. So if I was gonna check a fuse, just to review, check a fuse or, or check for a break in the wire, we're looking for continuity or resistance, and we're just checking that. I'm just going ahead and we're doing our little check there and, and you know, I showed you the wire and, or, a, or we're set, checking to see the contact push button. And we want to see very, very low resistance in there when we're checking something dead. And then when we're checking something live, what we're doing is, is we're finding the reference, putting it on the proper voltage setting. And all we're doing is finding our reference and then testing. In this case, there we go. Okay. That, and whether you're talking about AC power, and, and all you're doing is you're just making sure you got power to that device. If you have power to that device and say it's not coming on, it's not operating, you know you found your problem. And it really is that simple. Now, there could be multiple failures. There could be other, other problems in the system. But that's the basics and the fundamental there. We, I haven't recorded even, didn't have to take that long on that. But that's the fundamentals of troubleshooting anything electrical, anything in a control system. I'm going to include a little bit of a clip with uh, uh, how to check across uh, three phase. Um, and I'll go ahead and I'll splice that into the video for everybody. Um, and then uh, this part right here, maybe I'll cut out if I can figure out how to do that. I'm not a full-time video editor. I'm just trying to put these together for everybody. And uh, if you want to, you can check us out, um, improvemaintenance.com. Check out some of our other videos. Uh, we also, uh, we're licensed electrical outfit. Um, we come out, we do training. We do training here. Uh, we do uh, integration work and rebuilds. We, we do hardware repair, PLC, HMIs, um, drive repair uh, here at the shop. We're just a, a full industrial electrical 
support uh, company. And uh, again, I appreciate you tuning in. Thank you for your time. Let me get this video spliced together and we'll get it right out to you. Thank you. All right, what we're doing here is we're checking phase to phase across our variac. So our power is actually coming in on the side. It's on right now. And any two legs, I'm checking. Right now I've got 2.7 volts and we're going to go ahead and we're going to turn our variac up. We've got a nice little voltage meter tied in. I'm going to leave it right there, Andrew. Appreciate it. See? And then right now, 229. Why don't you go ahead and turn that down for me, Andrew? And you can see it going down.